Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22 here in Elm Creek. I was going to say I'm going to use this John Deere. I'm not going to use this John Deere. I'm going to use this John Deere over here because the other one, uh, this one's got a much faster road speed. So we'll get the thing off and then back again much quicker. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to unhitch the baler. This one I'm just going to put down in front of the barn down here. At least for now. And we might go and do something more with that one later on. So if we back that one up in there. And then once I've unhitched this tractor. I don't know if we'll be able to send the tractor from here to the shop. I suspect we won't. But we want a plow of some kind. And we also want a mulcher in order to be able to mulch our stubble. So we'll see if we can do both of these jobs. So we'll set destination, and that's going to be over here near the shop, like that. And he is able to get out of here, but whether or not that combine is going to be in his way remains to be seen. No, he was able to drive around the combine. Right, that's really cool. He was able to drive around the combine. Let's go and have a look at our other tractor down here. He's still on his way. He's almost reached the destination, actually. So I will take over this one myself. Love how well he's driving along that road. So I'm just going to take control of this one. We've got our other one driving to the shop. And we're going to pick up a mulcher from there first. And then we're also going to have a look at a plow. Uh, there's a couple of different options that you can have for plows. And there's one in particular that I'd like to get which is the spader, and I'd like to see that one in action. So if I come in here right now, this is the only location that we've got. Now if I go, we need to, we'll just bring this one up like this. Right, sell wood. Oh. Right. In the right place, aren't I? South Valley Biomass Energy. I, I am in the right place. It just says sell wood. That's what really confused me. But maybe we can also sell bales. Now, there's nothing happening at the moment with the bales. So I'm going to um, remove all of the straps. And then I will go over here. And I will sell. Sell wood doesn't do anything. So let's take a bale. Ah, you have to chuck it off the trailer. Right, so I don't know exactly how much we're getting from this. It's about 97 per bale. I mean, that's not bad, actually. You, you think about that. Every time you pick up a bale and load it onto your trailer, you're getting $100. That's pretty good. I like that. I like the fact that I'm getting $100 a bale. I, mean, I could get $100 a bale in real life. So, there we go. We're now on 38 So, $100 a bale-ish. I know it wasn't quite $100 a bale. It was a little bit different than that. Um, but we had 21 bales, so just over $2,000 for the straw from that field. That's pretty good. We also had uh, $4,000 for selling the wheat itself. We got six grand from harvesting that field. That's pretty good. I mean, I know I'm spending money like water at the moment, and we don't have anything like that. But so far, we've got six grand. So we are on easy settings as well. So easy settings, it, it does make life a little bit simpler for us. And I'm going to go there. Are you able to leave here without getting hung up on anything? He's turned round. He's able to get out. He's finding the track. He is. Look at that. It's a little bit complicated just to start with while he figures out what he's doing. But we can forgive that. We can let it we can let it carry on. So there's two things that I wanted to get. One is a spader, which is this thing over here. Thirty-five grand for the cheapest one, which is two and a half meters wide. That's a three meter and that's a four and a half meter. So we'll go with a little one. Um if I get this, I can't get anything else. A spader prepares fields for the next sowing. It can be used instead of a plow. So that should remove the needs plowing um, 
line. Uh, subsoiler prepares, it can be used instead of a plow. This tool suits perfectly for grape and olive farming. So we could use that for the grapes and the olives. Um, technically, we should be able to do this one as well. You, you can use these instead of a plow in a field, but you cannot create a field with these items. There's a big difference there. It should be noted you cannot create a field with them. Now, here we have the mulches. So we've got this one right here, which is 4,500. It is 1.4 meters wide. It's a very small one. This is 2.2 meters wide, and this unfolds out the back of the tractor. It does work quite nicely. I've already tried that one. And then you've got a 3 meter one there. It's not very expensive, is it? At 9,500, that one is fairly cheap. This one is cheaper still, though, at 4,500. Kind of want to get that one. Because that might allow me to get the spader as well. It's only 1.4 meters. It's not really not very big at all, is it? Let's do it. Let's just, let's get this little tiny one right here. And buy 4,500. Right. Where, oh, there it is. Hiding over there in the bushes. It's a tiny, tiny little... Look at that thing. It's hardly worth a bother. That's, that's, it really is hardly worth <laughs> that's hardly worth bothering with at all. Right. You need to get back to <laughs> this thing's brilliant. We need to get you back over here because I actually want to start it going in here. Um, but what I want to do is I want to create a job with this one. So I've got go to, I've got field work. So I'm going to go with field work and then I've got target position. I've got the right vehicle, the 7810. And then I've got target position here. Now, what I can't do with target position is I can't select a field number. This is, if I start this one up in this corner up here, like if, if I say, right, select this field here and then start, it should go to the edge of the field. I'm not going to do that, though. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the middle of the field at... We could set it at a slight angle like that. Pick a target rotation. I want to see if that also makes a difference. If we have this target rotation here. Oh, wait a minute. I didn't actually create the job. Right, create job. Field work. Over here. So let's do that at an angle right there you've got to press space you've got to start job there so i've got to do that one so he's now driving to the field so he's going to go over there and then i've got this other one who has now just turned up in this field i just wanted him to arrive in the field and we've got the trailer and now i'm just going to move him over here a little bit so that he's out of the way and then we'll stop him again and I would like to buy the spader as well. I want to get this one working. So the cheapest one is 35500 I don't have that much money at the moment. But what we do have is that header trailer over there, which, quite frankly, we're not going to be using, are we? Like, I'm not going to be using that header trailer. Combine will just keep the header on as he is. So I reckon I could sell that header trailer without it causing me any issues if I can get enough money for it. This is my next thing that I want to do. I'm going to lower that one down there and I'm going to put that one there. And then I just want to have a quick look in the shop. We go to the owned items here. Header trailer right there. It's only 800 I only get $800 for that. That's not enough. We'll have to take out a loan. And there you can see, we got the mulcher has turned up already, and he started in the middle of the field. He's now going to turn round. And he's going at that angle. So you have got a number of different angles that you can work the field at now. It's not just sort of uh, north-south and then a 45-degree angle from that. There is additional angles that you can work a field at that bit i do like i think that is quite cool what i don't like is that if you tell it to go and start working a field it does that 
Okay, my screen just went completely black right there. Uh, it used to do this occasionally in FS19. What I don't know is if that showed up on the recording. So I guess we'll have to wait and see on that one and find out. So I'm going to just stop that one there. Actually, you know, I don't need to stop that one there a minute. We'll let that one carry on. He's going to keep working the field at this angle right here. So we've got additional angles on the terrain now that we can work, which is quite cool. It's another thing that I quite like. It's another little quality of life improvement. You've got additional angles that you can go and work the field. So he's going to mulch this field, and then we want to get a spader, so we're going to need to get enough money to be able to do that with. And I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do to get that cash. Alright, I am back doing some more recording, and for those of you who are new to the channel, um, I, there is a little explanation in the comment section, um, in the description. Uh, basically, my wife has a number of long-term illnesses and can sometimes require uh, weeks of care or sudden hospital appointments and so on and therefore I need to make sure that I have a whole load of content recorded well ahead of time which I'm now working on building up towards and also in order to facilitate doing this easier I record everything in a great big chunk and then I just split the episodes up into sections so that is why my videos are kind of like the way they are and I don't have a proper like intro outro type situation going on like most people do so anyway um since I last recorded we have had from the wonderful Mr. Stevie He's already gone and released some mods. We've also got some mods from Giants as well. So Giants have gone and released the Fiat DT over there. We've also got the mainstay of many people's farms in FS19, which was the 7210, the, well, the Case Pro, this this bad boy right here. But there were several different sort of versions of it. You've got 7230, 4050, that was it. Right, yeah, so we, we, we got this tractor right here, and it goes all the way up to a 260 horsepower tractor for a relatively low price compared to some of the others. Uh, so there's, that one has been added in. Uh, I think there was one in large tractors. Uh, there wasn't, but I have got the Zerian saddle track. It's something that I had before anyway. I just hadn't shown it yet. Um... That's the pre-order bad boy right there, and there's various different options with it, so we will take a look at that one at some point. Uh, what else was there? There was a wheel loader that came in with the Giants mods that they've released, the um, New Holland one. So we'll expect this over the next few days. Giants are going to be dropping several of their um, machines and so on. Uh, that they didn't put into the original lineup. They add them in as mods or downloadable content so that the main game isn't bloated out with loads of it, but you still get those options uh, pretty quick. They did the same in FS19. I think they did in FS17 as well. So we can expect several more of them to turn up. Personally, I'm really hoping for one, um, a selection of the Valtra tractors that we are missing this time round. I'm hoping that they will make a comeback. Uh, in particular, I'm hoping that we get the Cow Edition Valtra because then Petro Gracemark, who is on my, is one of the um, admins on my Discord channel, he changed the um, Cow Edition one and put his own line of Valtra tractors out called the Skittles Pack, and they were absolutely amazing. They were fantastic. Um, so hopefully we'll see that, and we might see the Lamborghini tractor as well, which would be really nice. Now, Stevie. He has also started releasing mods already, even before he got the Giants editor. He's just been playing around. See, we got these um, Stevie mods right here. So that one's a Stevie mod, and that one's a Stevie mod right there. By Stevie. They'll all say by Stevie. And basically, if Stevie... Oh, this is the Giants one here, the little trailer, the Stroutman. This one was another mainstay of um, the early game FS19, so you had these options there, and you could go down to a bale trailer as well if you wanted to, so that one's really cool, um, it would have been quite handy for our bales previously, but I mean, the trailer we had was just fine, so Stevie, what he does is he tends to add and change things around quite a bit, now at the moment he hasn't added in by the look of it, additional items that you can put into the trailers. 
I'm really hoping that we'll have a trailer that we can tip stones into. Now, maybe, just maybe, we can actually tip the stones into these trailers. It just doesn't include it in this bit down here in the, in the symbols. But I'm not sure about that. Uh, but what Stevie generally does is he will add in additional options. So we've got standard capacity here, 40,000 um, litres, 60,000 litres, 120,000 litres... And that's as high as he's gone with that one. It hasn't altered the it hasn't altered the weight capacity of it. So if you've got the weight limit enabled, then that won't change. Um, you, you won't be able to make use of your 120,000 litre capacity. So you will need to disable that if you're using Stevie mods. Um, which is I I mean I quite like the Stevie mods in for um, certainly for like a playthrough like this. So I don't know if I've got the thingy activated at the moment. Right, what are you doing? Oh, I know what you're doing. You're getting hung up on this one. I'll move this one out of the way. Uh, so yeah, we, we've got these mods coming in already. Giants are busy chucking theirs out pretty quick and they will continue to add more mods fairly rapidly, I would say. And so we better go make use of a whole load of those. So I'm quite looking forward to seeing what they go and chuck out. All right, let's go and move this one up over here like this. And that mulcher can keep going. So someone that said to me about whether or not they've got multi-angle terrain. They don't actually have multi-angle on the ground. Now, personally, I'm taking this as a good thing because multi-angle on the ground takes more system resources so if you've got still just the um the four angles you've got um north south and then east west and then it's also got the diagonals as well if you've just got those in the fields on the ground fantastic but if you notice the angle of that tractor he's not on a 45 degree angle is he that's not a 45 degree angle 45 degrees would be over there so he's actually got that that it looks like we've got additional angles for doing our work in here now i'm actually going to test that a minute we'll go over here to start with and i'm not going to worry about doing the mulching on this corner over here we'll just use this as a quick test ground for doing the angles here so he straightened up there and he's doing a dead straight line up and down on that bit and he will do the same for going up this way as well. So we'll just bring him over here like that. And there you go. So he's got that angle in there. And that works just fine. Now a 45 degree angle. So we've got this angle right here that we've been working on. But then 45 degrees would be more like that, wouldn't it? So let me go here. And there you've got a 45 degree that he's going to work on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just put it halfway between the two. And we'll see how much choice he's got. So it's like I'm, I'm halfway between those two angles there. So he's got a 45. And he's choosing to move round to that one. So we've got... Uh, yeah, there's 16 angles. I just had to sit and figure it out. If you count each direction that the tractor can face in the field, you've now got 16 angles instead of the previous eight. So they've added in an extra eight directions that the tractor will work. So it's not... I wouldn't say it's full multi-angle terrain, because multi-angle, the sort of the specifics of that is that you can point the tractor in literally any direction you want. Plus, it also shows the... Um, texture on the ground for the same so it's not quite that but it's a lot more versatile than it was previously and the fact that the texture only has the limits that it previously had to me is a good thing because this means that our textures on the ground aren't going to be sort of using up more system resources and the great thing about this game they seem to have gone back to their roots a little bit to really focus on not only do you get a gorgeous experience with a high-end machine but you can also play the game on a potato and if you had full multi-angle terrain that limits more 
the potatoes that can run the game. So they, they've gone and they're achieving this balance again. And I think they've done the balance really well. I really do love how that they've um, made this work. Right. I wanted to get a spader. That was the next thing that I wanted to get. So I'm going to go into this tractor right here. I'm going to drive it just up to... I'm, I'm physically pointing at the screen right now. I'm going to drive it up to the corner up here because I want to see a spader in action. I want to be able to see this one working. So what we're going to do is we're going to send this tractor here off up the road. So it's going to go here like this. And I'm going to set destination over here like this now last night i had the privilege of being able to take part in a live stream that was run by jimmy j he is an administrator on my discord server and jj um while he had the stream going i spent a lot of time running around looking for the collectibles that are hidden on a map and there are all kinds of collectibles hidden all over the place different ones hidden in different locations some of them seem pretty cool um the, the places that are hidden others you'd like you, you just you, you'd never be able to find them um not unless you knew they were there but the thing about these collectibles oh there was something here that i wanted to try you got bowling look at this We've actually got bowling. I don't know if there's going to be like an achievement for knocking all of these over. But I want to try. It's probably not the way to do it. So you, you've only got literally one chance of being able to do it with the basketball. And then you've got to reload the game so that it comes back up again. So there's one right here. You've got the Jet Set Farming 2148. And there is a collectible little cow there poking his head out. So if I grab that one a minute, you've got to get close enough to it. And then you press R and it should... There. You've got to get close enough to it so you can press R. You have found a cow. There are nine more to be found. You get $1,000 for each collectible that you find. Doesn't seem like a great deal, admittedly, but I have been told that there is an additional bonus once you find a whole group of them. So there's a campsite just up here. Now these these collectibles on this map really are well hidden. There's ten lots of um, collectibles that you... I didn't want to go that way. Oop, I got run over there. There's ten lots of collectibles on the map and... I think um, for each group of 10 that you find, you get a bonus of 100,000 after finding all 10 of them. So the, it is worth going around and trying to find them, especially if you start to get an idea of where they are. It's not going to be long, I wouldn't have thought, before someone releases a video showing the location of every single one of them. Now, I personally don't know where they all are. Um... Maybe I could get a video out showing where they all are. So there's a trailer. I've now got 35,000. The great thing about these collectibles is that they are a little bit of a source of income. Even if you don't know where they all are, it's worth sort of having a hunt around, looking in some unusual places, looking at the just the different areas and generally having a scurry around. Uh, because just a few thousand can make the difference when you're trying to buy one or two items so like here there's actually two we have a cow uh eight more to be found trailer right there another eight to be found so there's two there one inside the other i didn't actually know they were there that that one was a bit of a surprise to me didn't know they were there but i'm getting an idea of the places where these things turn up which is making it a bit easier so um, anywhere that's hard to go to, it, anywhere that you've got to walk a little distance to get to, that's where you'd expect. Um, the maze, maze that we know is around, there's definitely some in there. And I believe in the water down here, there's some. Although I didn't actually find any myself. That being said, I'm certain that there are some here somewhere, and I think there may be some under the water here somewhere. I'm just not quite sure where, because I think there's actually a cave in this lot. 
Somewhere in the water here, there is a cave. I just don't know where this cave is. So you've got a bit of water going up that way. I'm going to get stuck here now, aren't I? So we can come out this way. There's uh, some steps up here. And we'll go and explore the water down a little bit further in just a minute. I just want to check up around here, see if there is anything up here. Getting onto the roof, there is a number of them that are in difficult to reach places. If you sort of see a, a building that you think, you know, is, is quite high up and it looks like there's um, details around it, it's probably worth scrambling up to have a look around. It is probably worth the effort. So let's drop down here and... See anything on there? There, look, we, we have a cave. I knew there was a cave here somewhere. I knew there was a cave somewhere. So we, we can journey down into this cave down here. Okay, this is, this is really cool. I knew there was a cave in here somewhere. I just hadn't been into it. This is awesome. This is genuinely awesome. And there we have an item in the cave. Right there. There's a little cultivator. I didn't even know there was cultivators. We found a plow. I don't know if there's anything else in this one. Is there any more in here? It seems like the sort of place that they would hide more things. <laughs> yes, there is. There's another one right in there. A little one right in there. So I'll grab that one as well. There's another tractor. AI worker B has completed their task. So how do you get out of here? This this is awesome. Uh, this I I hadn't been into this cave before. Oh, here we are. I hadn't been into that one before. I didn't I I knew that there was something there cuz I seen a picture of it. Um but I hadn't actually been in. That is really cool in under there. So we've got a little bit of money now. We have got a little bit of money, which is going to help us out. And this is this is really awesome. Um, there's more over around there. They are scattered all over the place. Okay, so we can find them. But we now got 39,000. I have it on good faith that in the Erlengrat map, there is cheeses hidden around on the map. I don't know what you get overall for all of the cheeses. And I have also been told, uh, not that I've been told, I have uh, I was told about the Ellingrat map. Um, the other map, the, um, I'm going to start this one over here and let it carry on doing a bit more. Um, the French map, that one has game cartridges. There are ancient game cartridges hidden around and there's 20 of them hidden on the map. You get 50,000 euros for every one that you find, or $50,000, whatever currency you've got it on. 50 grand for finding each game cartridge. They're very rare game cartridges. They are very, very rare game cartridges. Right, I wanted a spader. This is the only one that I can afford. I have 39,000. So we will buy that bad boy right there. I mean, I could go and take out a loan. Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.